Hi everyone, are you ready for a new UI pattern? Stop using protocols. And let's talk about the new Vision Pro release. I'm Serhii Botenko, an engineer at CleanMyMac. And here we go with the news. You don't need protocols. In many cases, you can use closures, structures, or enums instead. Consider this. You need to pass a single call, and if you go for a protocol, you will have to give it a name, add a function, pass the dependency, and confirm the protocol. Then create a mock for testing and confirm the protocol as well. Way too much code and complexity. Just pass a closure as an argument, and you will be good to go. The same applies for protocols that describe data structures. It is almost begging for direct use of structures there, especially for playing models with no logic. As you can see, there are situations where you can do without protocols, but we can do without your support. Like and subscribe to the channel. CFUI has changed how we build UI, so we can use declarative UI approaches from different platforms. In today's article, the author provides an example of using the container pattern from React, which separates fetching the data in a container view and rendering the actual UI. And we circle back to MVVM, where the view model is implemented as a Swift UI view, which doesn't make testing any easier. Before I get to the news about Vision Pro, let me tell you about the Millennial Mac. The first Apple Macintosh turns 40 years old, and that's why it is a millennial. By the way, we have one in the office. Also, you can check out stories from Mac admins from GNUG. Details are in the description. Finally, on February 2nd, Vision Pro will be available for purchase, but only in the US for now, starting at three and a half grand. And in a true Apple style, you can separately purchase a travel case just for 200. But let's move from dry facts to something more interesting. Journalists had a chance to test Vision Pro before its release, covering the experience of wearing and adjusting the device. You might need additional lenses or a different cushioning to feel comfortable. Another discovery across the board was the heavy feel after 15 minutes of use. Vision Pro already supports typing text and offers several ways to do it. By voice, typing on a virtual keyboard, and selecting letters with your eyes and confirming with a gesture. Journalists noted the precision of eye and gesture checking, but I still find it hard to imagine coding this way. And unexpected news. Netflix, Spotify, and YouTube will not be making apps for Vision OS and will disable adapted iPad apps. What do you think about Vision Pro? Are you planning to buy it or will you wait for the next release? We've talked about the product, but let's switch to the development. Apple released a Q&A on developing apps for Vision OS. It covers the following questions. How to interact with elements using gestures, when to use Windows and immersive space, and answered many questions on the elements layout. StarKit 2 allows you to test purchases in a simulator, also making it way easier to write unit tests for the purchase flow. So you need to create an SKTest sessions instance, specify a StarKit file, and then you can test your flow. The framework offers several methods for managing purchases. You can buy a product, make a refund, or simulate a failed payment. I highly recommend switching to StoreKit 2, write unit tests, and make sure your payment flow works as expected. Using any view can significantly reduce your app's performance. Tests on real device showed the frame drops by 10% when scrolling content, and up to 16% with frequented data updates. So be careful using any view. The article explains in details how to find such performance issues using Instruments app. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more updates. See you!